Hi guys, I am Michael Lubrin. I am a brand designer and 3D artist. And in this video, I'll share my process on how I design logos and packaging for my projects. This one is a personal project, but the process that I'll show here is the same as what I do for an actual client project. Today, we will be designing for a tea brand named Parasol. We'll sketch some ideas, create some logo options, vectorize them in Illustrator, design the packaging, and finish with some 3D mock-ups for presentation. After the discovery call, I like to start with a creative brief. The goal here is to create a cohesive brand identity for Parasol that highlights the premium quality of their products and their craftsmanship that has been tested by time. I include here their unique selling proposition and also their brand values which are authenticity, sustainability, and excellence. For this brand, we want to target the working age group interested in wellness, mindfulness, and has the taste for the finer things in life. They also want to be perceived as sophisticated while still being grounded by their rich history. I then simplified everything in the brand DNA section, and the descriptors that stand out here are luxurious, elegant, and conforming. Lastly, we define the deliverables and creative considerations which include exploring more abstract logo options and using gold foil paired with deep colors for the packaging. The next step of the process is to find inspiration. So basically, Parasol is an umbrella. So I'm very keen on getting vibrant umbrella references with very intricate patterns and possibly some cultural references. I also looked at packaging with geometric elements and illustrations. I also gathered some packaging references with gold text and an embossed finish and some logo designs with abstract forms. I then use Photoshop to color correct the images so they form a cohesive visual direction. Because the last thing that I want is to confuse the client, so I want everything to be very intentional. And this is the final mood board that I created for Parasol. The next step is word mapping. This is like a brain dump or a warm up before doing the actual design. I write a bunch of words that relate to the brand. Usually, I create categories to help me extract more keywords. Writing out these words generates a pool of ideas that I can then use as a starting point when doing the logo sketches. So for Parasol, I write words related to umbrellas, their appearance and function, as well as how they connect to things like culture, fashion, weather, and even other media. Word mapping prepares me for the next step, which is logo sketching. When I do my sketches, I like to give myself an hour of focused work to generate as many logo ideas as possible. So for this brand, I start by sketching typical umbrella forms as a warm-up. I also did some sketches incorporating sun and tea leaf elements. I also sketched top view perspectives of the umbrella. And then I shifted to more abstract drawings, letting my mind wander and experiment with more circular and geometric logos. So having a time constraint pushes me to come up with better ideas, and the word mapping step before this allows me to approach it from different perspectives, instead of limiting myself to just one direction that I might not like in the end. I take a photo of my sketches, then jump to Adobe Illustrator to vectorize these logos. I start by importing the image from my camera and setting it to a low opacity so I can work on top of it. I choose the ones that I like or those that have the potential to be great options. This first one is a curved end with the umbrella inside it and then I join this with some plant-like elements. This part of the design process is where your illustrator skills come in. So for geometric logos, I try to use basic shapes 
and then I combine them using Pathfinder or the Shape Builder tool. For more freehand logos, I use the Pen tool or the Curvature tool. I went for a circular logo for the second option. This last logo concept looked like icicles at first, and I was about to let go of this concept, but when I tried cutting it in half, it kind of resembles a crown, which I feel gives off a very luxurious vibe. Usually what starts as something that doesn't seem to work can really end up as a strong logo. I then explore font options for the logo. I'm looking for serif fonts that fit the brief really well, something elegant, premium, and something that embodies the brand personality. Once I'm happy with at least three logo marks, I pair each of them with fonts that complement the logos. I like to present three logo options to my clients. And when you really take the time to truly understand the brief and do the initial steps of the process, it is almost certain that you will nail the logo presentation on the first round. I create both vertical and horizontal variations of the logo and use the colors from the mood board to test how the logos would look with colors. So among the three options that I presented, this is the final logo that I decided to use for this project. Before I do the packaging, I'll take a few minutes to create a packaging skeleton. This is basically a rough guide on what to include and where to place important sections of the packaging design. I also adjust the font size based on importance or hierarchy. This step ensures that I don't miss any important details when designing and that I have a plan on how the information should flow on the packaging. The most exciting part is definitely designing the packaging, and I do my designs in Adobe Illustrator. When you work with clients, the best practice is to prepare your workspace to include different layers. The dye line layer, the design layer, and the background layer. And when you are using gold foil techniques, it's best to include a metallics layer as well. I start by changing the background of the dye line using the eyedropper tool. I want the brand name to be the focal point of the design. And one element of this design is the umbrella illustration. I want it to be simple, so I clean this up to make it look more obvious, and I use a lighter blue as an additional color. I did some nice details like this crown and these hanging ornaments. And the logo mark will be in the middle to fill this space. Directly under the brand name is where I'll place the type of tea or the product variant. And the rest of the space will be for the other information about the product. I added a premium tag here as well as the number of tea bags inside. And then I finish this with these two panels, the product description and the flavor profile. I added these flourishes or ornaments that I got from a stock photo and it's perfectly fine to use stock assets as long as you read through and follow the license, especially the one that applies to print or packaging. I added more details to the umbrella and also worked on other details of the packaging. I also added geometric illustrations as well as these leaves that look like they are falling off the umbrella. I added a third color, this one is a teal shade to give the design a bit more contrast. Next, I identified the parts that I want to have a gold foil finish and changed them to this gold color. Since I'm using a combination of fills and strokes, 
I used the recolor artwork tool so I could easily change the colors. I added more details and moved all the gold elements to the metallics layer. From here, I just designed the left and right sides of the box. The left will have the company story in the profile of the T variant. And the right side will have the ingredients, the brewing guide, some manufacturing information, and the website. The other side of the packaging has the horizontal version of the front packaging. You will notice this on tea packaging in the market. This makes it possible to stack it in two ways that fit the space or the shelf better. As a final touch, I added the logo on the lid and the barcode at the bottom. And this is the final packaging for a parasol tea. Of course, I will also work on the colors of the other variants. Again, I am using the Recolor Artwork tool to make these easier. And I want this burgundy color for the hibiscus and the purple palette for the lavender. I also like to print the design to do some quality control to make sure everything is in the right place to check for errors, and to get an idea of how the design would look like and feel even before production. This is of course a miniature version. I try to fit everything within what the printer can handle. So I just cut along the trim lines of the die line and fold the edges to form this packaging. So let's assemble this one Inspect all sides to see if everything's correct. And this is the mini version of the design we just finished. The next step is to create some mock-ups. I always like to do my packaging mock-ups in Blender so I have full control over how they look and I can render a realistic representation of the box. I use a 3D box model and lay down the design. I again check if all designs are properly placed on the box. This process, by the way, is called UV unwrapping. And it's always super satisfying when you see a 3D view of the design like this, where you can rotate and move it around. Another advantage of using a 3D program is that I can simulate the gold foil finish and the embossed effect. So when I plug this, the texture shows up. I then create more placements and scenes, exploring different sides, camera angles, and various setups to showcase the designs in the best way possible. And with a few more tweaks and processing in Photoshop, here is the final product showcase for Parasol. Thank you for joining me today and I'll see you in the next video.